On my daily round in our small country town, I found many instances of old folks in their little cottages with a cat by the fireside or curled in their laps. Such companionship made a huge difference to their lives. All this to remind me of cats, and yet our official education ignored them. But that was more than fifty years ago, and things were beginning to change even then. They were starting to include cats in the lectures at the veterinary colleges, and so I assiduously picked the brains of students who came to see practice with us. Later, as the practice expanded, I did the same with the young assistants who arrived bursting with the new knowledge. Also, articles about cats began to appear in our veterinary periodicals, and I would read these avidly. This went on throughout the fifty odd years of my veterinary life, and now, when I am retired and it is all over, I often look back and think of the changes which took place during my era. The recognition of cats was, of course, only a small part of the almost explosive revolution which transformed my profession. The virtual disappearance of the farm horse, the advent of antibiotics, which swept away the almost medieval medicines I had to dispense, the new surgical procedures, the wonderful protective vaccines which regularly appeared—all these things seem like the realization of a dream. Cats are now, arguably, the most popular of all family pets. Large, prestigious books are written about them by eminent. Veterinarians, and indeed some vets specialize in the species to the exclusion of all others. In front of the desk where I write, I have a long row of the old textbooks I studied in those far-off days. Sisson is there, looking as vast as ever.